So here I am set up to uh, remove this uh, plate on the front. Uh, hopefully I will not be in the way of the camera too much and you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'll start with this screw down here on the corner, which you probably can't see. There are four screws in here that hold this plate on and the uh, ball bearing, spindle bearing gun is behind that plate. So we'll just take this apart here so you can get a better view of what that looks like. It also has a little ring on here, you can see, which is designed to keep metal particles away from the bearing. So there's the plate. Now you can see that I've got a sealed bearing in there. Uh, this bearing, as I said, it's held in place by a, uh, it's held in place by a, uh, the snap ring, the snap ring uh, fits in a groove in the bearing on the outside of the bearing and uh, rests up against the headstock and keeps the whole spindle from sliding back. And the bearings on the back, of course, uh, up against that bell, they'll wash or pull on that and hold this under constant tension and puts a preload on that bearing. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to do some measuring to find out, but I'm pretty sure this casting is uniform thickness from the top down to the bottom. If not, I may have to use a, uh, an extra long milling cutter to face off the back of this casting so that it is uniform thickness because the new Timken bearing or tapered roller bearing that I want to put in here, first of all, does not have this groove in it for this snap ring. And I, even if I were to cut a groove in there, which I could probably do, uh, the, the tapered roller bearing is going, to put, is going to hold that spindle out quite a bit further than this bearing does just because of the way uh, tapered roller bearings are constructed. So uh, even, if, uh, even if I could put a, a snap ring in there and use that mechanism to hold that bearing in place, it, it would push this spindle out too far and the tensioning arrangement wouldn't work. So my plan is, instead of using a snap ring on the front of this bearing, by the way, the, uh, the, the, the cylindrical opening that this bearing fits in is uniform diameter all the way through that casting, clear through to the back of that casting. So my, my plan is to be able to slide the Timken bearing into that same opening and push it back a little bit further and to hold it to be able to put tension on it I want to create a ring that will screw on to the back of this casting with a spacer between the ring and the bearing to hold it in place so I can put tension on it and of course the size of that spacer is what will determine the exact positioning of the front of the bearing so that I can turn that any size I want. So uh, that's the plan at this point. Like I say, I'll just, I'll have a, I'll drill holes in the back here uh, to tap them, uh, probably quarter inch, uh, maybe five sixteenths, make a ring that will, I can then bolt onto the back of this casting that extends down into the, the bearing opening, that cylindrical opening, and then that will hold a spacer in there that will push against the bearing and, and uh, apply tension to the to the spindle so that's the plan for now thanks for watching